The term diabetes mellitus describes diseases of abnormal carbohydrate metabolism that are characterized by hyperglycemia, elevated blood glucose levels. Uncontrolled diabetes dramatically increases the risk of cardiovascular disease, kidney disease, and nerve damage. Normally, when we eat carbohydrates such as bread, the body breaks this down and absorbs it in circulation as glucose, which is a type of sugar. Increased blood glucose levels will stimulate insulin secretion from the beta cells of the pancreas. Insulin promotes glucose storage in tissues by binding onto insulin receptors on the surface of these cells around our body. This is to reduce blood sugar levels to normal range. Insulin can do this because insulin allows the uptake of glucose into these cells, including liver cells, heart cells, kidney cells, and nerves. Glucose is a main source of energy for these cells. For example, in this liver cell, insulin binds onto insulin receptors, which promote the expression of glucose channels, allowing influx of glucose into the cell. Insulin also stimulates enzymes which promote glycolysis and therefore energy production. Insulin also promotes enzymes for glucose storage as glycogen. The net effect of insulin is to lower blood glucose levels to normal range. Diabetes occurs when there is a problem in insulin secretion or peripheral resistance to the action of insulin. These problems lead to hyperglycemia and its associated complications, such as cardiovascular disease, chronic kidney disease, and neuropathy. Diabetes is divided into two main types, type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus. Type 1 diabetes is characterized by autoimmune destruction of the pancreatic beta cells, leading to absolute insulin deficiency. No insulin production causes an increase in blood glucose levels. Type 1 diabetes is typically diagnosed in childhood, and children often present with diabetic ketoacidosis, which is a medical emergency. However, one-fourth of cases are diagnosed in adults. Type 2 diabetes is by far the most common type of diabetes in adults and is characterized by hyperglycemia caused by a combination of insulin resistance and defective insulin secretion. The underlying cause of insulin resistance has traditionally been attributed to predominantly environmental factors related to overeating, sedentary lifestyle, and resulting overweight and obesity, with less prominent contributions from aging and genetics. The majority of patients with type 2 diabetes mellitus are asymptomatic at presentation, meaning they don't have any symptoms. With hyperglycemia noted on routine laboratory evaluation, and this will prompt further testing. Diabetes mellitus is the number one cause of end-stage renal disease, blindness, and non-traumatic lower extremity amputation. Chronic hyperglycemia is an important cause of complications of type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus, which include microvascular and macrovascular complications. These complications are thought to arise from the following mechanisms. 1. Formation of advanced glycosylated end products, which really accelerates atherosclerosis and endothelial dysfunction. 2 increased oxidative damage which causes cell injury and dysfunction. 3. Activation of polyol pathways with accumulation of sorbitol, which is toxic. 4. Platelet dysfunction associated with increased platelet aggregation. Let's first focus on microvascular complication, which is a chronic complication of diabetes mellitus. And this includes retinopathy and cataracts. It also causes neuropathies, including peripheral neuropathy, where you get sensory loss in the peripheries more so than weakness. Sensory loss increases uh, the risk of injury. For example, injury to the foot 
would not be noticed due to reduced pain sensation, and this can then progress to a foot ulcer. Patients with diabetes also have poor wound healing, and the foot ulcer can become gangrenous, infected, and this can lead to an amputation. The other type of neuropathy is autonomic neuropathy, which causes a dysfunction in the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. This can lead to things such as erectile dysfunction, postural hypotension, and gastroparesis. The final type of microvascular complications is nephropathy, where you get damage to the glomerulus of the nephron, which leads to proteinuria. Diabetes is the number one cause of end-stage renal failure. Macrovascular complications of diabetes mellitus include peripheral vascular disease, which can manifest as claudication, pain in the calf when walking. Cardiovascular disease, which can present as a myocardial infarction, as well as cerebrovascular disease, such as a stroke. Given the significance of these micro and macrovascular complications in diabetes mellitus, it is critical to manage these patients appropriately, beginning with patient education, aiming a HbA1c less than 7. HbA1c is a reading of the blood glucose levels over 3 months. You want to aim for normal blood pressure and cholesterol levels. You want to stop smoking, encourage exercising and appropriate diet. Management of diabetes mellitus also includes monitoring for the micro and macrovascular complications we discussed. Finally, there's also pharmacological management, which differs between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. For example, in type 1, the pharmacological management is insulin. Because in type 1 diabetes, you have absolute deficiency of insulin. Whereas in type 2 diabetes, the management can begin with oral or subcutaneous hypoglycemic agents, and then later progress to insulin when there is some pancreatic dysfunction. In summary, we talked about type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus and we talked about the chronic complications of diabetes mellitus, the microvascular and macrovascular complications. Finally, we talked about the general management of diabetes mellitus.